can't speak for anyone else who uh, is in the spiritual field, but I can speak for myself in this context. I can't imagine sharing that outside of love. It just doesn't have any meaning outside of love and devotion. I can never teach self-recognition as an exercise in itself. It's got to be connected to this whole emotional center of enjoyment, that which would normally enjoy the world and enjoy us, each of us enjoying the other, all of us enjoying each other and all of us. We enjoy that. the key is to just remain as an enjoyer. Don't even get caught up in this realization thing, otherwise you're going to get frozen there. If you take realization as a separate category away from your heart essence, because then you'll just get caught in that web of thinking that you still have to know something, or that being that is dependent on some sort of knowledge. And therefore, you'll erect a condition before it, and then you'll feel that terrible sense of bondage come in again, that feeling like, I don't know who I am. I hate myself. I hate, I abhor myself, that kind of stuff. So to float in I am that is to float in we are love. I am love, we are love. And that love is like a lubricant. It keeps you from getting grabbed by the process of your own realization and tortured by it. <laughs> if you talk to spiritual seekers, you'll see that many of them get tortured by their own process of realizing. Even if it's a, even if it's a successful process. So that's why I talk about love all the time. I can't get my hands off it. I, I can't find my way out of it. The love has enveloped this other process of I am that and entered into it in some profoundly devotional way. It's non-duality, for sure, but it's devotionally informed. And the devotional aspect allows you to come and go from your humanness with no problem. Sometimes people will ask me when I do my webcasts, I had a great experience with you, David. It was unbelievable. But now what do I do? See, somehow that eye has come back in. It got its teeth out and it sunk those teeth right back in. And so when I hear that, I think, oh, only the process of realization is going on. The devotion hasn't yet come up inside that. You can be in this all the time. It doesn't have to be sporadic. You can be completely in this all the time, 24-7. It doesn't even matter what goes on in your waking state mind. You could be the most miserable person on the planet. It doesn't even matter. <sighs> Truly. Your waking state does not set off some kind of condition as to whether this occurs or not. It just let me rephrase that. The, the important factor is that you, at some point, get in back of your waking state and just feel that out, feel out the thatness that's in back of your mind. And then later on, you'll find, as you continue that and execute it with diligence and love and regularity and sincerity and devotion, that it somehow turns your waking state into something favorable toward that. Not a, it's not a blockage anymore. I understand at one time it truly was a blockage. There's no question about that. When you begin your spiritual search, it's a real block. There's no question. I will be the first to agree. But I'm just saying that you can make over that 
reality tantrically. You can inform it devotionally. You can inform it with love inside of realization, love inside of realization, realization inside of love, and those things come together in a wholeness, and then you'll never be lost to it. It just has to keep on arising repeatedly. That's the only key. You, your process must continue unobstructed for some time. I won't say how long that's going to be because I honestly don't know from person to person. But there's some kind of extended process, a love-making process, a process of communion, of communing, of socializing yourself with that non-dual core. And then getting yourself to feel and breathe and relax into it. Your humanness marries it, it binds to it, and then that's it, it's finished. <clears throat>